Good afternoon, dear professors, experts, and friends from different universities and research institutions in the world, and the teachers, students, and the members from the International Research Center for Information of In uh, Philosophy of Information, Tianzhou Tong University. My name is Kai Yan Da. I'm very glad to stand here to present the newly composed paper entitled A Love for God in the Exploration of Human Knowledge, which is co-authored by Professor Kun Wu, Ji Wu, and me. At the very beginning, let me introduce the theme of this paper. In the process of the exploration of human knowledge, there is always a special love for God. Here, what do we mean? love for God is not something related to religion, but a way of thinking to pursue perfection, eternity, and absolute ultimateness. This special love for God has its positive effect and its negative effect too. The positive effect is it leads people in pursuing perfection and highest good, both in theory and practice. However, as a way of thinking, it is so simple naive and extreme, that it does not conform to the complex evolutionary laws of the world, because the whole universe developed in a multi-dimensional, multi-layered, and multi-directional interactions, full of all kinds of uncertainties. This special love of God is shown both in philosophy and in science, including information science, of course, also including artificial intelligence. First up, let's find out the special love of God in philosophy. In ancient Greece, there are very famous philosophers who have shown their love for God. For example, Heraclitus, the one who said that wisdom is one thing to understand the mind which moves all things through all. Here, his mind is the mind of God, and thus wisdom consists in knowing the divine God. Another philosopher is Socrates, he said, is the pious loved by God because it is pious, or is it pious because it is loved by the God? Good character is the gift from the gods. Besides, Plato also said, reason teaches that God is perfect. So, from the words and the sentences of these three great philosophers, we can conclude that in their eyes, God is divine, pious, good, and perfect. Except for them, there are also many philosophers in ancient Greece showing their love for God. Why is that? Because we all think that God is a universal, eternal, absolute, infinite, and ultimate existence. Well, all corporeal things, including animals and humans, are limited, temporary, relative, and one-sided with particularity. So Plato explains the relationship between God and humans as the relationship between the eternal, unchangeable ideas and the contingent individual forms. And thus, humans can only participate something eternal and unchangeable, such as beauty and the truth from the God. Now let's move on to see the viewpoints of likeness in God. In his eye, God is a perfect being and the first reason of all things, who set up a pre-established harmony for us. The world we live in must be the best possible and the most balanced world, because it is created by an all-powerful and all-knowing God. For him, God is omnipresent and omniscient, and his love for God is very pious. Well, from higher back, this special and infinite love for God has been a little different. Fully back that in this, the essence of Christianity that if man is to find contentment in God, he must find himself in God. God is nothing else than human. He is, so to speak, the outward protection of a human's inward nature. From Feuerbach's statements, we can see that the position of God is gradually dissolved while the position of human is raised. Philosophers began to put more attention on humans themselves rather than God. 
The shift of the way of thinking has caused a great influence on philosophy, resulting in several philosophical, uh, philosophical terms in its research fields and angles, such as the birth of phenomenology. From then on, it seems that God gradually withdrew from the human state and the viewpoint that man must participate the truth and knowledge from the God has lost its root. Second, let's find out the special love for God in science. Scientists also show their special love for God apparently. For example, Newton regards God as a masterful creator, and he thinks that the supreme God is a being eternal, infinite, and perfect. In 1814, Laplace published what may have been the first scientific articulation of causal determinism. He said in his uh, philosophical essay on um, probabilities that we may regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its past and the course of its future, an intellect which at a certain moment know all forces that set nature in motion. For such an intellect, nothing would be uncertain, and the future, just like the past, would be present before its size. Here, this intellect is often referred to as Laplace's demon in the same vein as Maxwell's demon. If we say that God in Newton, Laplace, and Maxwell is apparent and visible, well, in other circumstances, God is mentioned invisibly, not directly. But the God do exist here and there, such as in perpetual motion machine, singularity, super string theory, and the grand unified theory, because they are all proposed based on some perfect hypothesis. Now, let's examine the love of God in information science, including AI. In 1989, in his paper, in Physics, quantum, the search for links. Tom Wheeler proposed the thesis of age from date, and then he mentioned the same idea in different expressions for at least three times. The success of AI gives birth to computationalism and brings us back to Pythagoras, who thinks that all things were made of numbers. Besides, the newest research results in the most advanced technologies, such as quantum mechanics virtual reality, bioengineering, nanotechnology, and a human immortality, or tend to pursue perfection, to accept exactness and refuse randomness and uncertainty. Then, how should we evaluate this human love of God? Good or bad? In fact, on the one hand, it is a good thing, because it is a cheese for perfection, a cheese for the highest good and it encourages people to seek for the final truth and ultimate existence with great passion. On the other hand, it has obvious negative effects. The whole world is a complex system composed of many components which may interact with each other. The reason why we call it a complex system because it is intrinsically difficult to model due to the dependencies, competition, relationships, or other types of interactions between the parts or between a given system and its environment. And it has the properties such as nonlinearity, emergence, spontaneous order, adaptation, and feedback loops, etc. Some reductionists think that the complex system can be reduced to the simple ones, but can any complex system be reduced to simple parts? It is really a question. We all know butterfly effect, right? It tells us that a small change in one state of the deterministic nonlinear system can result in large differences in later states, which means that we can accurately or precisely predict nothing, even very minor perturbations such as a distant butterfly flapping its wings several weeks earlier could result in a tornado because there are so many uncontrollable factors there. Physics before the quantum has always been about doing this and getting that. The new quantum me mechanics appears to say that when we do this, we get that only with a certain probability. And in some circumstances, we might get the other. Einstein is having none of it. And he insisted that God does not play dice. 
with the universe. His friend Schrodinger wanted to support him, but what is funny is that the Schrodinger equation exactly proves that the particles appear in probability with uncertainty. And the Schrodinger's cat tells us that we are not sure, we are uncertain whether the cat is alive or dead because its fate is linked to a random atomic event that may or may not occur. What's more? Since the uncertainty uh, principle of Heisenberg is proposed, the belief in certainty and determinism totally collapses. Einstein still tried to find hidden variables to find a complete description of reality, but Bell's theorem later suggests that it is impossible. Here, we need to know that the essence of human thinking and practice Lie in, lies in freedom because we have free will. We think freely, choose freely, and behave freely, which contradicts with, uh, with the certainty and determinism completely. Based on the above analysis, our conclusion is stated but not limited in the following three points. First, human is not an absolute existence who is always constrained by many factors influenced by many internal or external interactions, thus showing the characteristics of uncertainty and complexity. Second, any advanced technology such as big data could not precisely predict the future evolutionary way of tendency of a complex system. Third, whether AI could produce intelligent machines superior than humans depends on humans themselves. And the key point to solve the contradiction between them is to build a civilized, free, and harmonious society. Okay, that's all for the main points of our paper. Thank you.